welcome back to the channel. We are doing our very first car review today, and we're doing it with my personal 2015 Porsche Macan Turbo, aka Penelope. So what are we covering in this review? We're going to be covering some key decision points, whether buying a used car or a new car, that most people are going to be looking at before they purchase. So what decision points are we looking at? We're going to be looking at five different points through every single review that we do, which is going to be price point, performance, styling, user friendliness, and safety features. These are all things that I think every one of us can say that we've absolutely looked at when purchasing new or used vehicles. And I, I kind of want to go over those for the vehicles that I get my hands on. So that's what we're going to be going through with Penelope today. So price point is a huge thing for people when they're going in. Most people either have a budget already set or they realize that they need to set a budget during the car buying process. So this car new was $78,000 ish for base price. Then you get the, to the options. And as anybody knows who has ever built a Porsche online, the options become plentiful and very, very expensive very quickly. Sticker price for this was about $93.5. Luckily, I didn't have to pay anywhere near that. I caught the the angel of depreciation. But just knowing that, like that, that would have set me apart if I was looking at this new. I would have said, ah, I don't know if I want a compact SUV that costs that much with the amount of features that I'm gonna end up having to pay for it anyways. So with that being said, price isn't always the best thing to look at. You also have to look at your, your standard features, your optional features. Is this the base of the base models? For this, it wasn't. When the Macan first came out, it was offered in the S version and the turbo version. The S version was somewhere around 55 to 60,000 before options, which brings us to our next point, performance. That was the biggest key difference was performance. This comes with a 3.6 liter twin turbo V6, whereas the S model came with a 3.0 liter, also twin turbo V6. So what does that mean in terms of performance? Well, the S model got 340 horsepower, whereas the turbo version came with right at 400 horsepower. Let's talk a couple more numbers with this. So zero to 60 time has been kind of hard to find an actual number on to say the least. I've seen from like 4.1 from people on the forums. When I remember looking at this car originally, the Porsche website claimed it to be a 4.2 zero to 60 second with the Sport Chrono package, which this car has, but then it went away. There was no time for zero to 60 anymore on there until a little bit later. And then it was showing 4.4 seconds. So I don't know if they changed like some software tuning or what the issue was with that, but we're gonna say somewhere between 4.2 to 4.4 seconds is roughly the zero to 60 time for this new. Now this is an older generation now. They've come out with a new 2.9 liter uh, V6 twin turbo uh, for, the, for, the new, for the new gen, uh, which actually outperforms this but personally, I've seen the reviews, I've heard the exhaust note, and I think this one sounds a little bit better. So let's listen to it and see what you think. So now we've moved around back to the exhaust. One thing to note, it does have the PSE, which is the Porsche Sport Exhaust on it. So what does that mean? You got two modes. So let's get it started up. We'll go through this first without PSE on, and then with PSE on. So performance could also be a big decision point for for you, or it may not be. If it is, awesome. I know it is for me personally. If not, that's cool too. 
But the next decision point is gonna be styling. I'm sure eight out of 10 buyers are buying due to styling for some reason, whether it's also coupled with the performance and the price point could be all by itself. So the styling on the Macan Turbo, this one actually has the sport design bumper. This is probably one of my favorite angles on this vehicle is coming right around this corner. You have this nice, basically thick nose, wide hips in the front, I guess wide shoulders. I don't know what you want to call these. <laughs> hips are in the back. But as you're coming across, then you start seeing the slight indent of these wheels. As we come around, everything's pretty subtle. You wouldn't think anything was special about it. Minus the red brake calipers that we have. I mean, everything, everything just looks like it fits. I mean, overall, it was very, very subtle styling for the time and still is to this day, even though that they've made a couple different upgrades. So where this car caught me was because of the subtleness. It had the performance, but also didn't look like it had that type of performance, which is something that I've always liked. So we have to understand the design cues that Porsche wanted to show off with this was that essentially, hey, it's a sleeper, but also a compact SUV. So it's practical but also sporty. Speaking of practical, one other big thing that people look for is trunk volume. In this case, it's basically a hatch. Now, whereas this isn't super deep, super tall, mainly because of the sloping roof line, it does fit the small case back here pretty nicely. It'll fit a ton of stuff in here. And especially when you take the cargo cover off, it really expands the, the amount of volume that you can get. But you still have to keep in mind that you do have this super slant right here. Um, and then in here, you have a nice little pocket. We've got an extra shirt because you guys know how much I sweat. So, you know, just in case. And then we've got our hat in here. Uh, one thing that I like to note in here, this does have the air suspension. Uh, you press that down and she's dropping dropping her ear in that's for the practical feature of putting in stuff that maybe is a little heavier to lift up and over porsche's got you covered it'll make your life a lot easier and then it also gives you a nice warning chime so that way you don't get hit by it kind of like i did with the uh in the anapi flight review if you guys saw that so Again, that's pretty user-friendly and it's also safe. So how about we go ahead and talk about the user-friendliness and safety features of this vehicle. All right, so first things first, getting inside. I'm gonna give you guys my very first impression of what it was like to get inside this vehicle. When I first got in, again, you can see that it's this bright red in here. I was just, I was like kind of, kind of mesmerized, taken back a little bit. Especially with the contrast of the black, you can kind of see Alcantara headlining. And then we, we've got buttons galore all over the place. So I was kind of a little overwhelmed to say the least, but I also knew that there was something amazing about this car because of the sheer fact that it's got like a thousand buttons. So one of the first things that you want to do as soon as you get in your new car, you want to hook it up to Bluetooth, right? You want to jam out, be like, oh yeah, this is my car, this is my car. Look at me, look at me, oh, oh, hey, hey. I hope that you guys did it back <laughs> for me on that. Um, but anyways, we're gonna switch over and take a look at the PCM real quick, and which is Porsche's infotainment center, and just kind of take a look at how the steps are in order to connect your Bluetooth. Again, like that's one of the first things that you want to do as soon as you get into a new car because one, you gotta have your music, music, your music, and two, what if you get a phone call? Most states are now, if not all of them, have mandated that you do hands-free talking. So, or stay legal and also have fun, jam out to your music. You gotta connect to your Bluetooth. All right, so already you're like, oh wow, look at all these buttons. But you're like, okay, so what do I need to do? Uh, Bluetooth, uh, let's, we'll just do phone. Cool. So originally it would take you to this. It's like, okay, please search and find telephone. New cell phone, but we need to turn on our Bluetooth on our phone. 
Okay, so there it is. It's finally coming up. So we're gonna select Bobby's iPhone. And then, cool, they match up. So we'll pair it. Uh, don't sync contacts right now, but you can if you want to. Oh, all right. And so we're in now. So then Bluetooth connected. And then you wanna come over here and that's it. So other than that, there's really not a whole lot to talk about for the infotainment center in here. It's pretty basic, uh, especially nowadays where this, this car is five years old. So technology has advanced a lot since then. All right, so let's get to driving now. So a couple of different things that we're gonna talk about while driving, steering, the performance of it, and also the comfortability overall uh, while driving. So right now we're going over this semi-gravel road. It's not terrible, it's not great. I'm coming to a Y intersection and this car does have really good visibility overall for the size of it, minus the very back pillar is pretty, pretty thick but you can kind of get around that a little bit from, from the corners of the window. And then we're just gonna get out. Go ahead and put this thing in Sport Plus mode. And see, see what we can do. So even with this car being five years old, it always still has the same get up. It always feels like it's just there, ready, ready to race. I enjoy being able to know that if I need to go fast or get around someone or anything like that or you know if I just want to kind of toy with someone who's got this little coupe or something like that who's like oh who's this guy thinking that he's gonna beat me and that well, guess what I'll do it <laughs> but overall yeah the comfortability or I'm on a fairly new road right now. You can still feel some of the bumps and mainly that's because we're in the in the sportiest of suspension settings right now. Um, so it, it is a little bit tighter, a little firmer. But overall, this is just a really good feeling solid car. So if we, one of the good things about this is that, okay, now we're in, now we're in comfort suspension. So we shouldn't get as much, but it doesn't change the suspension settings all that much. Usually where you can feel it a little bit more is over speed bumps and uh, more bump, bumpy bumps <laughs> than just like your normal, uh, your normal nooks and crannies in the road. You know, most roads are like freaking English muffins. I will say sometimes when you are in the comfort setting, it does feel a little floaty. So at a very minimum, I like to keep it in the sport, sport selection for the suspension. Sometimes Sport Plus is just a little too harsh depending on the roads. So how noisy is it? So it's not too bad. It's not anything like regal by any means, uh, but it's also not it's also not loud. So they've kept a lot of the the exhaust from entering into the cabin unless you've got your sports exhaust selected. And to my knowledge, there's no fake piping of exhaust sounds in here. It, it is what you actually are getting. Steering's pretty light, honestly. Uh, I think that's one of the, the things that they fixed in the second generation of this car because people were complaining it's too light. Um, and I, I will definitely agree with that. So, but the turning radius on it is pretty fantastic. It feels like you're in a lot smaller of a vehicle than you are. It feels, it's nimble, but it's also super light. It, it would be nice to have a little bit more feedback in this uh in the steering wheel all right there we go now so we got a nice tight nice tight grip just get it again <laughs> yeah that's so much fun <laughs> oh god i love that sound if, you, if you're only if you're not running the full boost and not completely down on the throttle, say about like 60 to 70% somewhere in there, probably like 50 to 70%, and you're shifting before the computer would shift for you, you can get a nice like crack, and we'll listen to that here in a little bit when we kind of dive back into the performance stuff because that is like one of my favorite things about this car is the performance of it, is that is that sound of the exhaust in here. 
All right, so I'm not sure what exactly happened to my video where I was talking about the different stereo options, but you have three to choose from. You got your bass, your Bose, your Burmeister. Burmeister is going to set you back around $4,000-ish. Bose is like fifteen dollars to $2,000, and then the bass is just the bass. But I talked about how the bass stereo, it clipped in a loaner vehicle that I had, so the amp just kept cutting out anytime the bass was too much. And then also, if you're an audiophile, the Burmeister is probably the way to go for you. Otherwise, the Bose is excellent. It's never disappointed me. But anyways, let's head back to the review. think about it in the comments below even though I dr I've driven this thing for you know three and a half almost four years now like every single time I get to get on the gas it just makes me smile just a little bit oh Porsche you done well you did good all right here we go to the exhaust and see see if it matches its performance cover the launch control so again got a, an automatic and sport sport plus press the breakdown rev it up is to it <laughs> every single time that is a blast launch control is so fun <laughs> everything about this car it's just amazing what they did to to make this thing you know i'm pretty i've i've never driven the s i've driven the like i said before i've driven the base model and i've driven this i've also driven the gts the gts is the first macan that i ever drove and it did have the updated PCM, but that, that that wasn't what I was looking for in the vehicle, you know? Kind of like what we talked about to start it off. We went over, hey, we got five, we got five points, right? Price, performance, styling, user friendliness, and safety. On the used market, these things are relatively cheap. When you're getting to the newer ones and you start optioning, they become a lot pricier and then performance like performance of this vehicle for what it is it's it's just it doesn't it doesn't make sense i know there's a lot of other vehicles out there now that are that are competing with it the stelvio quadrifolio uh the levante uh there's a lot there's a lot more competition in this in this market segment now than there was when this car was first introduced and that's not a bad thing that just means that porsche is going to have to improve more and faster as as we
continue progressing. And then styling. So styling, they styling is very Porsche-like, very subtle. It's not over the top. It's not aggressive in, in, in any way. The most aggressive feature, I would say, is the quad-tipped exhaust. If, if I'm being completely honest, there's no sharp lines. Everything's very smooth, very flowy. So it, it is very Porsche-esque. So this car hasn't really changed that much over the over the past six years since it's been out. It, it went through one update back in 2017, and then it just had its refresh. The, the main things that changed on it were a little bit of headlight grill design, and then the light bar in the back. But other than that, on the exterior, it's relatively the same. Inside's a whole different story. And then yeah, user friendliness, like it's not, it's not terrible. It's it's beginning to feel dated, um, which is fine. It's five years old, so you know, with the way the technology is progressing nowadays, and as quick as it's progressing, it makes sense that it's that it does feel outdated. The the layout of the screen, the lack of graphics, and stuff like that. It just it it definitely definitely feels dated. You can you can see its age. There are 55 buttons, 56 if you count the button to, to press down on the gear lever to change your gear. That's just insane. Everything has a button. So yeah, user friendliness, maybe you're gonna, gonna get a little overwhelmed because then you also have like another eight to 10 up on the, up on the top. So just keep that in mind. But as far as being lost, like with everything, as far as like, oh, what's this do, what's this do? I doubt it. So I think that it's it's pretty user friendly. And then so safety features in here. Uh, overall, this is actually pretty packed with the safety features with the lane keep assist, the lane change assist, the blind spot warning system, and then of course the rear view camera, which is now mandated. But other than that, there's not. It's it's a pretty fairly simple car in terms of technology overall com compared to some of the stuff that you get now. Um, and even some of the stuff that you could have gotten uh, with this, the the automatic cruise control. And I think that was the only other system, safety related system that you could have gotten in this vehicle. You can relate maybe torque vectoring as safety, helps you stay planted on the track, makes your track times go down a little bit but I wouldn't technically relate that to it. Uh, and I think those were like maybe the two options that weren't put in this vehicle. If a car at this price point doesn't have these safety features, it should. Uh, and then also whatever the car company or whatever the company is already offering as far as safety features go, that should already be included into every single vehicle uh, that they're currently making if it's possible, you know, um, software issues and stuff like that. But um, I don't think people should be without the safety features of because they can't afford it. Um, that's just my opinion on it. So what's my final take on this? It's a lot of fun to drive. It's like the biggest thing. It's uh, my biggest lasting impression. Uh, it's always there every single time I get out of the vehicle. Every time I park it at night, I'm just like, shoot. That was fun. And that's what driving is all about. So uh, for me, this thing is an amazing car. And then with the technology that it has in it, I think it can still keep up with all the newer cars and their high tech features and all that stuff. And then would I recommend this car? Absolutely. I would absolutely recommend at least driving one of these one time in your life and then experience the physics defying <laughs> Macan Turbo. It's it's absolutely truly exceptional. Uh, I still don't know how they did it, but it's it's an awesome car. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching this review.